Ooh, what is new to the mid lane for patch 11.22? Well, to be honest, Katarina is still turbo giga broken, so not much in that respect, but there is no Zed, no Yasuo, no Yone on this countdown, so who on Summoner's Rift are the other best mid laners for the incoming balance team's changes? So if you want to know who the top mid lane champions are going to be in a week's time, make sure you stick around. Now, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed this countdown series, and let's get into it. So first up, if you want to point and click mid laner who you can't really go wrong with, this is Malzar, who's going to be strong again in 11.22, and what's funny about Malzar is that he was actually picked at Worlds, which goes to show how good he is. Now, he's consistently had one of the best win rates for this entire season, and because Leandre's anguish isn't getting nerfed and Malzahar himself isn't getting nerfed, the purple Aladdin is certainly a very good choice. Now, in terms of your runes, I know lots of people like to go aerial Malzahar, but I'm going to recommend you the Korean setup with Comet, and the reason I like Comet is because it's pretty easy to proc, and it gives you more harass and poke in the laning phase. Now, as you copy down the rest of this page and turns your items, it's very standard. Leandre's anguish, Rylai's crystal scepter, and then after this, it really depends on the enemy team composition, so demonic embrace, Merlinomicon, Sonya's hourglass, void stuff, just build whatever it is you need to actually beat the enemy team. But what about if you actually want to do something more than just shoving waves and pressing R? Well, these next two champions I'm going to recommend, guys, are some of the best scalers in the entire game, and this is one of the reasons why Kale and Corky have two of the highest win rates out of any mid laners, and this is across all elos. And one development recently which has really helped these two scalers is the fact that Conqueror has been nerfed. So early game junglers and early game mid laners, so maybe Zed, Yasuo, Yone, these are a lot easier to play against, so you can get your mythic spine for pretty much free, and you really don't want to be picking either of these two champions if your team composition already has a lot of scaling in it. But for Kale, as far as your runes go, it's very standard with press the attack. Thankfully, because this didn't get nerfed like Conqueror, this is still in a very good position. And in terms of your items, you're still going Nash's Tooth with Rift Maker and then Death Gab, Sonya's Hourglass again. Just like Malzahar, just build whatever it is you need to beat the enemy team comp. And Kale, by the way, in Master and above, has a 55% win rate at the moment. Now, as far as Corky goes, for your runes, you're taking Fleet Footwork. And because of the change to Fleet Footwork in 1117, where you're healing more when you hit an enemy champion, for Corky being a ranged champion in the mid lane, and because this is scaling more of your bonus AD now, this is really effective and gives you the lane sustain you need, so you can hit your immortal shield burst spike without running it down, and after this you want to be finishing off your tier into Mana Mune, and then completing your core items with Essence Reaver, which is a great item for Corky because it's giving you damage, ability haste, and of course that Spellblade passive which is very easy to proc. So Kale and Corky guys are definitely viable late game mid laners, but again, just make sure to pick these when your team composition already has some early game, otherwise your Nexus is probably going to explode by 15 minutes. Now a bit like Malzahar guys, this next champion, who is best used with Leandre's Anguish, has been a consistently amazing mid laner for Season 11, and this is Anivia. And thanks to all those changes that date back to the pre-season last year, because your Frostbite is dealing double damage if your Q just clips an enemy champion, and because your auto attack animation and the actual missile speed are quicker, it's much easier to last hit and actually poke down the enemy mid laner. Now as far as your runes go, the best setup is with Electrocute, and then taking Presence of Mind in your secondary tree. This is very important, because this is going to give you the mana regeneration you desperately need, and also make sure guys to run attack speed in your minor runes because again this is really important for last hitting and also damaging the enemy champion. Now as far as your items go, Lee Andrew's Anguish is amazing on Anivia because of the tick damage which harmonizes so well with your ultimate and then after this you want to be finishing your tier into Archangel Staff and then completing Zonia's Hourglass, Voice Staff, Death Gap, any of the AP items. Again, just make sure to build the item you need to beat the enemy team composition and what they're building. And for some reason despite Anivia having a 52-53% win rate in pretty much every elo, she still really isn't pick that much. So if she is open, guys, she's a great blind pickable mid laner and well worth putting time into and actually picking in 11.22. Now next up, we have the champion who carried Tyler 1 to master. So how on earth can you guys not pick Annie for 11.22 if this is what this champion is capable of? But seriously, guys, just like Anivia, Annie has been amazing all season long and one of the reasons I really like her is because she's a lane dominant mid laner. You know, Corky and Kale, you might have to sit back and AFK farm, but Annie, you can be aggressive and you can dumpster lanes and snowball. But from Annie players I've actually coached, for some reason they play so passive, they really don't understand that Annie has one of the largest auto attack ranges in the mid lane, so you're always going to outrange people, but they're way too focused on just using their Q to last hit minions. Anyone can do this. That's super easy. Winning lane is always going to be our goal, so one tip you can do is to pay attention to your stacks underneath your HP bar, and when you're at three stacks, what you can do is press your E to give you four stacks and therefore your stun, and with the movement speed from your E, you can use this to gap close to the enemy champion and one-shot them. Now, because we are about burst damage, we want to be taking electrocute in our runes and the rest of the page is very standard make sure you copy this down and as far as your items go on annie it really hasn't changed all season luda's tempest again for the magic penetration and that burst damage zonia's hourglass morello voice staff death cap just choose the right item for the game you're in and of course we're running sorcerer shoes as your boots for the magic penetration which works so well with luda's tempest so if you want a strong laner guys and a great team fighter annie is still the mid laner you should definitely consider picking but let's say you want an even more dominant mid laner who might be less reliable in a 
in teamfights, but still just as impactful if you can play her. Well, this is Syndra. Now, I know that Syndra doesn't have the best win rate. Don't come at me for that. But there's a reason, guys, she's picked in pro play and a lot more in higher elo. This is because she's such an oppressive laner and with the right team composition, she can absolutely pop off. So the team composition you're looking for is simply one with a lot of CC. This is when your stun can really be used and landing this stun, especially in the mid to late game, pretty much means that whoever you stun is going to die. And I still don't think players in lower elos actually realize how OP Syndra's Q being on a four second cooldown actually is. So this of course is going to be the spell you max first and it turns your runes. So if you're against a close range champion, taking electric Q, which should be easy to proc, is definitely a great strategy. And for both of these pages, by the way, you're taking biscuits and time warp. And the other page you can take pretty much into any matchup that's always going to work is with Aerie. But for whatever keystone you take, make sure you're taking attack speed in your minor runes. This helps you poke close range champions and also get the push so you can hit level two first in the early game. And as far as your items go, just like Annie, we're getting Ludens Tempest with Sorcerer Shoes in the early game. And then if you've got a tier in the early game, you can upgrade this to Archangel Staff. You can get a Zonyas, a Void Staff, a Cosmic Drive, Horizon Focus. But whatever you build, just make sure your first two items are Sorcerer Shoes and then Ludens Tempest. But let's say you guys don't want to play champions who have been around the block. Let's say you want to play a newer champion who might be a little bit broken. Well, how about Vex? And let's just say you can get your hands on this champion because she is one of the most banned champions in the game for a reason as well. She's busted. You will definitely give yourself a great chance of winning in 11:22. Now, what makes Vex so OP? Well, she is a new champion, so right want to sell the champion and the skin. But maybe a more real reason why she's so broken is because of the fear mechanic in her kit. So when you have your Doom passive stack, your next basic ability, which adds an enemy champion, is going to fear them. And this is so dangerous for the enemy champion to get hit by because if your jungler's there, they're almost 100% dead. And even when you hit level six, it gives you the CC to land all of your abilities and just nuke anyone. I've seen Vex players as well who might be one on five after their lane, but they still one shot people with no magic resist. And just like Annie, because we're about burst damage, electrocute is your keystone and the rest of the page should make sense. And then in terms of your items, well, who would have guessed? Exactly the same thing, right? Ludus Tempest with Sorcerer Shoot. This combination is a must. And then after this, it really depends on the mid laner and comp you're against. So Horizon Focus to make use of the fear mechanic and Zonya's Hourglass, Void Staff, Death Cab, Morella, Nomicon, all of these are options. Again, just look at the enemy team's items and think what it is you need to blow up their champions. But Chiz, Vex is a little too new. I don't want to play a champion who's just come out. All right, well, how about the one before Vex, Akshan? And Akshan, guys, in the mid lane, despite getting nerfed, is actually still so strong. Like when a champion has a 55% win rate in high elo career, that's when you know they are legit. And a bit like Vex, Akshan's passive is really what makes him so good. The shield, the two auto attacks, and then the stacks you get on an enemy champion, which are all too easy to proc, it makes Akshan such a hard champion to actually run into. So in the mid lane, this gives you all the pressure you need, and despite the nerf to your heroic swing, which you still max first, you still have all the damage you need to auto attack your opponent's death. And thankfully, just like Kale, press the attack hasn't been nerfed, so we're running this as our keystone still. And then for your items, we're taking Shield Bow. We don't really need Gale Force or maybe Kraken Slayer because we have all the damage we need. It's just we kind of need to cover ourselves because we are pretty squishy. And then you can take Wit's End. And the great thing about Wit's End, even if the enemy team doesn't have a lot of magic damage, the on hit, the attack speed, and even the attack damage, these are amazing stats for Akshan. And then finish this off with a Ginsu's Rage Blade, and you will know why this champion, despite getting nerfed, is still incredibly good. And to be honest, in 11.22, he will clearly be the best AD champion. So if your team composition needs a bit of attack damage in the mid lane, if Akshan is open, lock him in. Now, the only champion on this list, guys, who is getting buffed or nerfed next patch, this is Akali. And she hasn't featured on any of these countdowns for a while now. But because her passive is getting buffed next patch, so in terms of the base damage and the AP scaling ratio, this is going to bring her back into the mid lane. But here's the thing, guys. I would still be careful picking Akali into ranged champions because with the fleet nerf, you don't get the sustain you once had as a melee champion. And because Conqueror has been nerfed as well, you don't have the sustain you once had. But here's the thing. Against melee and close range champions, Akali can really pop off because you can actually make use of this passive buff against these champions. Now, it's still a bit of a shame that you're all about your E2's new damage, but because your E is pretty easy to land against close range champions, especially when you hit level six, this really isn't a hindrance at all. And thankfully, because Rocket Belt and the rest of your items are in a good position. So Voice Staff, Death Cap, okay, Zonya's got nerfed, but it's still good. And obviously a must to build. You still have the offensive power to kill the opposing mid laner and then Snowball out of control. Now, one of, if not the best all around mid laner, guys, is going to be good again in 11.22. And this is Ari. You know, she has good wave clear, good mobility, good sustain, good setup with her charm. And this ability, guys, in your kit is really what determines what items we go as well. Because these days you're less of an assassin and more of a pick mid laner, we're going Everfrost with Horizon Focus, which works with our CC. So when you actually go in, you can lock down a primary target and allow your teammates to kill that target. Now, it's not like you don't have the damage to kill someone. Of course you do, but you're more about control 
controlling these team fights and picking weak opponents off rather than just going in, blowing someone up and then getting out. But still, even with this playstyle, we're going electrocute for the damage it gives you during lane. It's also good for trading. So this is still by far the best keystone. And then as your secondary tree, I'm going to recommend going biscuits and time or tonic and then starting corrupting potion. This is going to give you even more lane sustain and it pretty much ensures that you can get your Everfrost spike safely. Just make sure that when you do use your charm, you play a little bit safer because this is when you're most vulnerable. But Ari guys in 1122, you really cannot go wrong. But Ari guys really pales in comparison to this next mid laner. And this is Lux, who got four buffs a couple of patches ago. And this is why she has a 52, 53% win rate overall at the moment. And in 1122, nothing is going to change here. There are no nerfs coming in. You're still getting the extra passive duration. You're still getting the extra E damage and the ultimate cooldown. This makes you a bit like Syndra, one of the most oppressive AP mid laners to go against. And a bit like Ari, just make sure that when you use your Q, your light binding, that you play a bit safer. This is when enemy champions and junglers can capitalize and actually kill you. But apart from that, just play around your AE cooldown and your passive and you should be fine. Your ultimate as well being on a one minute cooldown at rank one, so at level six, this is absurd. This means you can clear waves by the press of a button to snipe blue buffs, maybe low health champions in the bot lane. It gives you a lot more gold and XP opportunities. Now, as far as your runes go, very standard first page, we're going to go arcane comet. And in your minor runes, I know some people might like to go attack speed in there, but we're taking two adaptive force. Thankfully, because of the attack speed buff you got, you don't really need attack speed in your minor runes to manage waves and get the push in the early game. Now, as far as your items go, just like a lot of champions on this list, we're going Ludens Tempest with Sorcerer Shoes, and then you should really be going Horizon Focus because of the range and the CC, and then Void Staff, Sonya's Hourglass, Death Cap, Magi's Morel and Omicron. Very standard after this, just adjust what you're building to the game you're in. Now, some of the best mid laners guys over the years have been those champions who can just shove waves on repeat and then roam around the map. Well, if you want the best champion to accommodate this playstyle, this is by far Rumble. Now, as far as your runes go, it's very standard with Comet and then Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter for the sustain. And for your items, it's very standard as well with Rocket Belt, Sonya's Hourglass, Void Staff. The Magic Penetration is pretty much a must on Rumble. But as far as what you're skilling, guys, make sure that if you're against a ranged champion, at level one, take your Harpoon. This is really important, but against close range champions, taking your Q because you should be able to hit level two first. Against ranged champions, it is way too risky to run up and hit the wave. So you're using your Harpoon to poke the enemy champion if they run up close to you or just to last hit minions and to preserve your HP. Just yet, try to make sure you're timing your W for the main source of the enemy champion's damage. Now, the best three mid lane champions, guys, for 11.22, I'm sorry to bore you, but these are all AP assassins. So the first one is Fizz. And the reason Fizz has taken off recently is because that E buff, which at rank five has reduced your E's cooldown by a massive two seconds. For an ability which makes you invulnerable and it also does a lot of damage, this is huge. Now, as far as your runes go, because we're about burst damage, taking Electrocute is just a must. And then for your secondary tree, taking Biscuits and Time War Tonic and starting Corrupting Potion, this gives you a lot more trading power in the early laning phase and make sure you're taking an attack speed shard in your minor runes. Now, as far as your items go, Leandro's Anguish, Sonya's Hourglass, Lich Bane, Morella Nomicon, Voice Staff, Death Gap, you know the drill by now, guys. Build any of these after Leandro's and Sonya's and you're going to be good. And as far as your boots go, please go cooldown boots. I know Sork Shoes look really tempting because it's magic penetration, but this build is all about cooldown. Now, the second best AP assassin is someone who's banned over 50% of the time in high reload. This is LeBlanc. So if you don't like Fizz, guys, LeBlanc as a substitute is even better. The burst damage, the new potential, the only real weakness for LeBlanc is your wave clear. This is why in your runes you have to run an attack speed shard. But apart from that, guys, you have some of the highest damage output out of any champion in the mid lane. And you're also extremely slippery and hard to gank, which is a great thing because this probably means that you're not going to die as much. Now, as far as your runes go, electrocute again for the burst damage. And we're still taking Ravenous Hunter, even though it got nerfed a couple of patches ago. And for your secondary tree, taking biscuits with time will tonic and starting corrupting potion. This gives you the lane sustain. So you can go D-ring, which is a bit more offensive, but you should still get your work done with the corrupting potion. And it means you don't have to buy health potions for the rest of the game. And then as far as your items go, we're all about complementing your burst damage. So sorcerer shoes as your boots with Ludens Tempest and then Cosmic Drive. This is a really offensive setup because you don't really need Sonya's Hourglass. You should have enough survivability. And because Cosmic Drive's passive will activate as soon as you get the item, you're getting the movement speed and ability haste to get around the map and to use more cooldowns to get more kills. Now, the number one mid laner, guys, for another patch. I mentioned in the introduction that Katarina was on this counter, and here she is, the number one spot. Has this been one patch this season where she hasn't been good? The reason Katarina is OP is just because her kit is so overtuned, there's so much in it, and thankfully, we can actually dodge the Conqueror buff by going electrocute in our runes. And I'm also going to recommend a secondary tree page, guys, for you guys around bone plating and overgrowth, which looks a little weird. But if you're against a champion like Zed, for example, who's all about using his cooldowns at once, so if any champion has burst damage, LeBlanc, Zed, Fizz, running bone plating is going to reduce their damage, but 
But still, if you want to go the standard page with Triumph and then Coup de Gras, absolutely fine, no worries. Just make sure for your items, you're going Sorcerer's Shoes and then Nash's Tooth or Rocket Belt. These are always going to be your first two major items and then following this up with a Zonia's Hourglass. And those are the 15 best mid landers, guys, for 11.22. If you did enjoy this video, once again, please leave a like down below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future daily uploads. And also, make sure to check out the Game Week website for all the Challenger tier content you will ever need. We're talking courses, guides, high elo VOD analyses where we break down what the best in the world do that you have to start doing. So check it out. Links in the description and comment section. And until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been the Jizz. Oh.